Hello everyone, and welcome to today's tutorial on image annotation. In this session, we'll be working with this kitchen scene featuring strawberries, a knife, yogurt, honey, apple, and granola. While I am adding objects and their annotation type, I'll also explain why annotating these objects is crucial. Accurate annotations help AI models recognize everyday objects. Imagine using this for a smart grocery checkout system that identifies fruits automatically or maybe for a cooking assistant robot that picks out ingredients. It could even assist diet tracking apps by detecting what you're eating. Cool, right? Now, let's see how to actually label these objects using Labeler's tool. You see multiple objects here. You may switch between them using numbers or by directly right-clicking. The pan tool allows us to adjust the image. The quality of the image can also be enhanced from this option. We'll talk about transparency later, and these two features can be used to adjust the dimensions of our image. We'll get to the grouping tool feature as well in the latter part of the video. First up, bounding box annotation. This is the simplest method where we draw rectangles around objects. I'll start by drawing a bee box around the knife here, then the bowl, and lastly, the strawberries, apple, and granola. Bounding boxes are perfect for clear, simple shapes and are commonly used in object detection tasks. But as you'll notice, they're not super precise for objects with irregular shapes, like the strawberries. Just view all your annotation from here. The 10 here highlights total number of annotations. Now coming to polygon annotation. Polygon annotation lets us outline objects more precisely. Let's annotate honey first. Now, how to change the annotation type of the strawberry so that it can be more precisely labeled. Let's see the procedure to change the annotation type of the strawberry. Changing it to polygon. Just clear annotations that are not required. You may use polygon annotation by right-clicking at boundary points or just holding shift and dragging the pointer along the boundary. To complete, press N. See how much cleaner that looks? Now, annotating each of the five strawberries may require much more manual work. For this, Labeler has a feature called SAM. With just a single dot placed on an object, it automatically creates a polygon around it. Let me show you. I'll place a dot on this strawberry and boom, it's perfectly outlined. This is super handy for fast, accurate labeling. In a similar way, let's annotate the other berries quickly. Adjustments can be made to your annotation from here. See the changing width of the polygon. Now, let's move to keypoint annotation. This is great for identifying specific parts of an object. I'll mark keypoints on the knife, one on the handle, and another on the blade. This method is especially useful for things like pose estimation or tracking object parts in motion, like identifying where someone's joints are in a fitness app. Not so much for full objects, but great for details. You can view your annotated dots like this. Once you've labeled everything, precision is key. In Labeler, you can easily adjust the size of bounding boxes. We now have a problem. As you can clearly see, this part of strawberry is left out. So, to include any specific part in your polygon, firstly, activate the key points. 
Now select the starting key point while holding Shift, and then just right-click on the point you want to include. Hold Shift again, and click on Ending Key Point. This ensures the data is clean before exporting it for AI training. Adjustments can also be made like this. Beyond basic annotations, Labeler offers additional features to enhance your dataset's quality and structure. Attributes. How do you distinguish between a ripe and unripe strawberry or a red and green apple? Using attributes, you could do this. Let me demonstrate how to add them. In the Attribute dropdown, you'll find multiple options. I'll select the Radio button option to categorize the ripeness of the strawberries and the color of the apple, adding green and red as two options to our attribute. Similarly, adding options for the strawberries attribute. Now let's select the red option for the apple here. And ripe for the strawberry. Attributes allow you to add specific details to objects. Using this feature, you can classify objects based on their characteristics. Classification. Unlike attributes, which are object-specific, classifications apply a common label to the entire image. For example, if the whole image depicts a breakfast scene, you can classify it accordingly. This is particularly useful in large-scale datasets where context matters. Grouping tool feature. Let's start by first creating Calyx and Berry as objects and annotating them separately. The grouping tool is used to assign a common ID to both of them, indicating they belong to a common entity. We'll have to remove the previous annotation on the strawberry to understand it better. Just click on the annotation and press delete on the keyboard. Or remove them from this section. annotating Calyx using SAM. And then the berry. You can use SAM here too. Clicking right up here, we activate the grouping tool and all the annotations inside it will be selected and assigned an ID as described earlier. Group one is assigned to the berry and Calyx. Moving on to the other strawberry. Now we have a feature for auto bordering here. First, move your pointer over the calyx, then press control. Key points will be activated. Then click on the key point where you want to start. Then, clicking on the second key point would indicate the direction you want to move to. And now mark the last key point to end. At last, press See how smooth the annotation at the boundary looks now. I'll apply the grouping tool to this and the others quickly. This is how our final annotation looks like. You may view all group annotations by clicking here. The filter section helps in filtering out specific annotations. Objects not designated to any group can be viewed too. And that's it. Bounding boxes for quick tasks, polygons for precision, and key points for detailed parts. 
Which method do you think works best for this image? Are you planning to cover more advanced annotation techniques or automation features in future tutorials? Then book a demo with Lobeler today.